Ivan with DIY Detail, and today we have a special vehicle, a Can-Am Spider. Now, sort of a hybrid between a motorcycle, a small car, a sports car, you name it, it does it all. They're fun to ride. And this one has gloss paint, it has matte paint, it has plastic, has all sorts of surfaces, it has water spots on everything, and we're gonna take care of that and ceramic coat it. Stay tuned. First thing we need to do is actually remove the seats. So this one clips off, very easy to do. This one slides out. Now the reason I'm removing the seats is because they're leather and some of the chemicals we're gonna be using on this, they're actually not very friendly to leather. So we'll get rid of that leather, make it a lot safer. Next, we need to remove the windshield to be able to get underneath it. And it's just four little screws, so. Now that the windshield is off, we're ready to start the decontamination process. Now, as I mentioned, we have plastic, we have shiny paint, we have matte paint, we have all sorts of surfaces on this and there's water spots everywhere. Obviously, on the matte surfaces, we cannot polish. One thing that matte surfaces can't be done is polish. Everything else, we can polish to get rid of those if we need to. But first, we're gonna do a full-on chemical decontamination. First step with that, we're gonna be using rinseless wash, getting it all nice and soaked down with rinseless wash, then all clean, diluted 15 to one. If you're a professional detailer, you need one of these kegs. Now the upper portion of this seat is actually rather difficult to remove, so I didn't remove it. But I'll be careful not to get any of the chemicals on it. So the rinseless wash is gonna give us a lot of lubrication. It's gonna to start to break down and emulsify the dirt. And get it ready for the next step. Next up, foaming it with All Clean. In the IK foamer, I have one gallon of water, eight ounces of All Clean, so a 15 to one dilution, and I've added one ounce of Incredible Suds to give it a little more foam and longer dwell time. This trike lives outside 24 seven. That's why it has so many water spots on it and it hasn't been protected before. So we're gonna be adding the protection with the ceramic coating. We're gonna let the all clean dwell for a few minutes and then we're gonna hose it off. The next step is gonna be water spot remover, but we have to get this first. While this is dwelling, I'm going to take my brush with a bit of rinseless wash and clean the wheels. bit on the grill here. Get rid of those few little insects. Then off we go. Now something like this, you definitely do not want to be doing this outside. We're going to be letting chemicals dwell. This was in direct sunlight. It's black. We might cause streaking. We don't want to do that, especially with all the matte paint on this. Now this is designed to be outside, it is designed to get wet, but a pressure washer may not be the best tool for this because of some of the electronics and things like that. So rinsing it off with a hose is more than adequate.
Now that the all clean is all rinsed off, next step, water spot remover. Uh, as I mentioned, this trike gets driven. It's by no means a uh, trailer queen. The owner of this trike does at-home services. And in doing so, drives around a lot. and weather isn't a concern. It was snowing yesterday when they brought this to us, so. They like to ride, and they like to use it. To aid the water spot remover in doing its job, I'm gonna agitate it using a rinseless, dampened towel. So this will help spread it. The rinseless provides some lubrication. And especially on the mat surfaces, it's going to give us the agitation that we need. I mentioned that this was brought to us yesterday. Very important thing, let it cool down before you work on it. Now that the water spot remover has done its thing, back to rinsing. And one thing that people notice with water spot remover is they think it has some form of protection in it because it brings beading and sheeting back to the vehicle. It's not adding any protection what it's doing is removing all the minerals that are clogging either the paint, the plastics, the glass, whatever, and exposing the real paint underneath. That's why we're getting beading and sheeting back when we apply a water spot remover. So a water spot remover is a great maintenance item to add to your regime. Next, iron remover. So we're gonna be spraying iron remover all over this liberally. And this is something I don't normally do. But in this case, we have a special case. I'm not gonna be able to get in everywhere with the decontamination towel. Yes, I'm gonna use the decontamination towel on the upper surfaces, uh, especially the, the areas where I'm gonna be polishing. But for the rest of it, the iron remover by itself is gonna be doing the job. Now what I am going to be doing with the iron remover, just like I did with the water spot remover, is agitate using a microfiber towel. At this point I've used more iron remover on this trike than I do on a full size truck. but. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do. Now, a lot of people have asked in the past, 
How much do I charge for something like this? Well, a motorcycle or a trike like this, yes, it's smaller than a car. But in reality, there's more work and more time involved because of all these little nooks and crannies and small areas. So another fresh microfiber towel, our rinseless wash for additional lubrication, and off we go to agitate. As you can see, the iron remover is doing its job. You don't see it on the black, but on the floor we have puddles of red. So we know that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Now, to rinse it off the final time. You want to rinse until what looks like suds is gone. And we're almost there. Just to be sure, I'm gonna go back around one last time very quickly. While we speed this up, while I'm squeegeeing the floor, take this moment to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Hey, give me a thumbs up if you like this. Now that the floor is dry, time to dry the paint. I'm gonna be using our small twist loop towel and an air blower. Make sure I get all the water out of the cracks and crevices. So here we go. As you can see, drying one of these, rather long. But let me continue. Next step, panel prep. We're doing panel prep to clean the surfaces to make sure there's nothing left on them and it's an additional safety measure. Even though we blew out all the cracks and crevices, there's been a few little water drops falling here and there. This is gonna clean up the traces of those water drops make sure the areas that we didn't polish are all removed of grease, oils, waxes, whatever, and then we're ready to coat. I'm gonna use one towel as a dry towel, the other towel as a damp towel. Fold them so they're nice and thick so we don't have pressure points. Spray some panel prep on the one towel, follow behind with the other. Now the paint prep is all done and we're ready to apply the ceramic coating. We've chosen the three year ceramic coating for this vehicle because it stays outside all the time and it gets driven through all types of weather plus it goes on gravel roads etc. So we want to protect it as much as possible from water spotting because it had quite severe water spotting before. Now thanks to the water spot remover and a bit of polishing most of them are gone. The chemicals or the components that cause the water spots are definitely gone because of the water spot remover, but the scars are still left behind. We want to reduce that scarring. We do so with the graphene in the three-year ceramic coating. The other thing is there's a lot of really intricate parts here and spending our time getting in there, trying to get coating on all these little parts would be very time consuming. Now, some of you are out there probably typing already. Why don't you spray it on? Well, Spraying a coating is very, very dangerous. 
And I know there's some companies that condone it. I personally do not. The reason I do not condone spraying a ceramic coating is you've seen pictures, they're wearing gloves and a mask. And then short sleeves, their face, their hair, everything is exposed. Coating absorbs through your skin as much as it does through your lungs. Having a mask is fine, but then the overspray that's getting on you is getting in you. That's why we're opting not to spray this. We could. If you have a paint booth, definitely you can spray. The final aspect is once the coating is cured, so one week later, we're going to be washing this one more time. And when we wash it one more time, we'll be using quick beads as a drying aid. The quick beads as a drying aid, it will get in absolutely everywhere and coat everything. Now, we didn't do it before because we knew we were going to be applying a coating and you don't want the quick beads interfering with the coating bonding. But once we're done, a week later, all the surfaces that we can coat with the applicator will be done. From there, all the surfaces that we couldn't coat will get covered with quick beads. And if they maintain the quick beads every six months, they'll be fine. So off we go to the coating. Now for the fun part, the three year ceramic graphene coating. Always shake it up. And using the foam applicator pad, I'm going to start on a rather large surface. The uh, frunk or the hood or whatever you want to call this piece at the front. Uh, just so I can get the applicator well primed. I put a number of drops on here, maybe 10 or so. And applying in a circular motion. Get it on there. Now, since this is matte paint, we actually want to take it off a little sooner. We want to make sure that we don't have any high spots. We want to make sure that we actually get it everywhere on this piece. And now our applicator has coating on it everywhere we need it to be. So I'm going to take a low nap towel. And once it starts going back to matte, about 50%, I'm going to take my towel, level the excess. And then with a second towel, make sure that I don't have any high spots. From there, we get to go around one more time, get it done everywhere. Now, since both my towels are the same color, I have to keep them separated. So I'm gonna use the handles to do that. Now that my pad is well primed, I can attack and go everywhere I need to go. Keeping an eye on the cross-linking. And when I see that where I've started has cross-linked, then I'll start wiping. But until then, I can keep going on these parts. Now the higher the humidity and the higher the temperature, the faster the cross-linking is going to be. And the lower the temperature and the lower the humidity, the slower it's going to be. Now, if this were not matte, if it were gloss paint, five minutes in this uh, climate here that we're at today would be perfect. But seeing as it is matte paint on most of this vehicle, We're going to be leveling just a little bit sooner. Making sure to get down to all these little cracks and crevices. And concentrating on the matte surfaces first. 
because the gloss surfaces, if I have a high spot, they're a lot easier to get off and worst case scenario, I can polish them off. Whereas on the matte surface, well, you can't. First towel, then the second towel, just to make sure. Again, the most important part of this is making sure that the matte surfaces are well taken care of. The gloss surfaces, of course, you don't want any high spots on them, but they're easier to deal with if you do. Once I get all the upper surfaces done, we'll go down back on the rack attack and get all the lower surfaces taken care of. And I'm also doing the instrument cluster here. Very important to protect it. Since I am wiping off the matte surfaces sooner than I normally would, my initial towel may get damp. And if it does get damp with coating, I'll get another towel to finish off. And one thing that's important to note, if I do get it damp with coating, it's not the end of the towel. I don't throw it away. All that we do with that towel is put it in our wash bucket and the surfactants in the wash bucket will stop the coating from cross-linking. When we stop it from cross-linking, it will then wash out of the towel easily. I think you get the idea by now. Let me uh, go into fast forward mode here. If I have something to say, we'll stop and I'll bring you back in. So there we have it. One of the last parts is being done, the windshield. So yes, the three-year ceramic coating can go on any exterior part. And since this is all exterior, well, there we go. The only part that we're not gonna be putting this on is obviously the seat. For the seat, we have our interior ceramic that's gonna do a fabulous job with that. So if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, please leave them below. We'll see you in the next one. And if you like matte colored vehicles, you may want to check this out. Mm -hmm.